Hello there! My name is Mike, Pokétips Mike, and welcome back to episode number 21 of my Pokémon Nuzlocke Randomizer Extreme Gold Heart. It took literally all of my effort to say that backwards. Whew, today is a big day for us because we are starting off in the Kanto region. And coming off of last episode where we went to the Bell Tower and called the legendary Pokémon Palkia, which the Kimono Girls were convinced was a Ho-Oh. Don't worry, Kimono Girls, I make that mistake all the time and took our first steps in the Kanto region to get to the Pokemon League, we have a huge episode ahead of us. So up north is Victory Road, the final challenge between us and the Elite Four. And my friends, the Elite Four are going to be tough. So before we jump into that, I want to make sure we are super duper prepared. And to prepare ourselves, first things first, we're actually going to be going back to the Johto region. Because there's a little unfinished business for us over there. Last time in the Bell Tower, we actually picked up the Moonstone. So remember that Jigglypuff Iki that I have in the box that's been sitting there like forever? Now we can finally evolve it. So let's go pick up Iki. There she is. Iki, get on the team. It's time to finally evolve you. And here we go. Honestly, I never thought we were actually going to find the Moonstone. So seeing this thing evolve is going to be great. Let's do it. What? Iki is evolving? All right, let me close my eyes. What's this thing going to be? As long as it's not slacking, I'm pretty happy. I just don't want slacking because of that terrible, terrible ability that it has. But what's it going to be? It is a Granbull! Alright, well that's interesting. I've never used a Granbull before, so that's gonna be a huge first if we do decide to use it. The only problem right now is it's at level 15. Jolly Nature seems good for this thing though, and oh wait, it's really slow. Maybe not. But the Intimidate ability is nice, lowering the foe's attack stat, that'll be really good if I want to like use it on the team and just switch around with it. It has potential. It definitely has potential. But that's not the only thing today that has potential, because there's one more encounter that we just straight up did not get in the Johto region, because we never went down this way. So over here is Route 45. I believe this is the final route in the Johto region that we didn't go to. Let me just double check. On my little map over here, yeah, Route 45, we went to the Dark Cave, and we already caught a Pokemon at Route 46 very early on, so yeah, final Johto encounter at Route 45. Let's go ahead and let's get it. I've got my big, big Palkia over here, and here is the grass. So this is going to be crazy. After this, the rest of the Pokemon that we'll be able to get are going to be over in the Kanto region, so let's cherish this final encounter over here. Ooh, there's an item down there too. We get like a two-for-one prize, but what's my encounter? going to be a stunky ew stinky stunky i guess the game really wants to give me lots of pokemon that i never used before because not even in diamond version i never used a stunky well i guess one of the nice things about stunky is it evolves in like the mid 30s and we caught it on the first ball that's definitely a nice thing about stunky but it evolves somewhere in the 30s, and it being both dark and poison type give it potentially interesting evolutions. So I am kind of excited to see what this thing evolves into. The foul fluid from its rear is so revolting that it can make people feel queasy up to a mile and a quarter away. That is such an oddly specific number, a mile and a quarter. I feel really bad for the Pokemon researcher that had to figure that out. All right, we're gonna name this Stunky Cabbage after the Cabbage Guy. I've wanted to name something after the Cabbage Guy forever. I never found the Pokemon that would be really appropriate for it, so we're just gonna go ahead and name Stunky Cabbage. And over here is the Sharp Beak. Eh, not really that great of an item for me. I don't really have a dedicated flying type attacker. I mean, I could give it to my Togekiss, but it wouldn't make too much sense. And oh, Marsh Tomp! You could have given me that. I would have loved the Marsh Tomp. But it's cool, we got Stunky. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna train up Stunky, and I'm gonna train up Iki a little bit. I wanna see if Iki learns anything good, because Intimidate is a really good ability that'll help us out a lot, so I might use it on the team. Bop, 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 hit him with the extreme speed. All right, Cabbage, is that gonna be enough experience points to level you up, 448? Yes! All right, so Cabbage is getting to level 34, and let's see what Cabbage is going to turn into. What? Cabbage is evolving? That's right, Cabbage is gonna turn into a Super Cabbage or a Spiritomb? What? <laughs> That's so cool, actually. Stunky into Spiritomb. Congratulations, your cabbage evolved into a spirit tomb. Ooh, that looks kind of cool following me around. I've never seen this before. It looks cool, but that green face is freaking me out. It reminds me of like a monster you would see in like Scooby-Doo chasing you around. At least it's a gentle monster. 
Now its stats all around are pretty good. Attack, defense, special attack, special defense. The only thing that's kind of lacking is speed, which we kind of nullify with the extreme speed over here. And the moveset is pretty diverse too. Night Slash, Psycho Cut, Cross Poison. Cabbage has potential. It definitely has potential. I can't really say the same about Iki though. So I trained up Iki a little bit and that attack is insane, but everything else isn't really that great. It's a lot slower than I was expecting. Although it does have one of my favorite moves, Egg Bomb. <laughs> and it also gets Rock Wrecker, which is a surprise finisher, but then uh, Secret Power and Slash are kind of underwhelming. Cabbage might find himself on the team just because it doesn't have any weaknesses, but Iki, I'm gonna put Iki away for now. Let's go back to my rain team, and that's enough excitement for me. Now it's time to make it over to Victory Road. All right, we're back over here where we started this episode and Tiffany's trying to call me. I wish I could like turn off my phone for a little bit. There needs to be like a silent button on that thing. Let's swap over to Wu for right now and let's jump in to this little gate over here. The reception gate for the Pokemon League. Oh, and here's a little guard. He's gonna stop me. Only trainers who have proven themselves may pass. Oh, the eight badges of Johto. Please go right on through. Thank you very much. Now here, this is actually pretty cool. If we go to the left over here, it would take us to Mount Silver, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, they won't let us go there for a very long time. You'll see scary strong Pokemon out there. You're not ready for it. Honestly, I feel like my team could handle Mount Silver right now. Maybe not the trainer on top of it though. And over here, this is the way to Viridian City, which once again, they're not gonna let me go to? And I don't really understand why. There's really no reason why they won't let me go there. They just said, oh, nope, never mind. The road's closed or something. Doesn't really give you a good excuse why you can't go. But that doesn't matter because we have a date over here with Victory Road. Oh, listen to that theme. We made it, guys. We made it. Now, let's go ahead and get our Victory Road encounter. Let's see what it's gonna be. It's gonna be something high-leveled. Let's see. Ooh, wall rain! That's pretty awesome. Another member to add to my rain team. The ice type is pretty nice, though. And I know this thing is very, very bulky. So we're gonna hit it with the Force Palm. I know it's gonna be super effective, but I don't see how Force Palm is gonna one-shot this thing. There's no way. Yeah, super effective. We're not gonna get the Paralysis though. I was really hoping for that. And ooh, Avalanche, you might have to watch out for that. That could probably do some decent damage to us. Oh, nice, we infatuated the thing. That's right, Woo, make this Walrus fall in love with you. And while you distract with love, I'm actually gonna throw a Net Ball at this thing. We actually have two balls that would work really well in this situation, the Net Ball and the Dusk Ball. Let's see which one catches it first though. Nope, not the net ball. All right, wall rain. Just fall in love with Wu. Don't attack your love. That's right. Immobilized by the power of love. Now let's try the power of darkness. Go, Dusk Ball. Go. Okay, we're getting a few shakes. No, we're not. No, we're not. Come on, just get in the net ball. Please, wall rain. Be easy. I don't want to have to hit you again with force palm, but there we go. Caught the wall rain. It shatters drift ice with its strong tusks. Its thick layer of blubber repels enemy attacks. And it's the Ice Break Pokemon, I didn't know that. Now, I did a quick Google search, and in Avatar, there's a creature called the Walrus Yak, so I'm just gonna name this thing Walrus. <laughs> we are getting so creative with these names over here. All right, but there we go, pretty solid encounter. Now, Wu, you can go to the back. I think I'll have Appa lead the way through this tunnel over here. We're actually getting a lot of good Pokemon at the last minute over here. It's very tempting to change up the team, but I already really like the team that we have. It's been putting in a lot of work, so I'm really not too worried about anything. The only thing I think I'm gonna really need to do before we fight the Elite Four, ooh, Skunk Tank. Wow, caught a Stunky before, now we're seeing Skunk Tank. But yeah, the only thing I really think we're gonna need to do before we go into the Pokemon League is just train up the team a little bit more. Because even though I'm pretty- Oh my gosh, really? Typhlosion? That couldn't have been my encounter? I wanna redo. I like Walrein. I like Walrein a lot, but come on. Cyndaquil is my Johto starter. I would have loved to catch a Typhlosion in here. Maybe we'll get one in Kanto. Who knows? But like I was saying, the only thing I'm really, really worried about is the five battles in a row that we're gonna have to do, and because of that, I think it's gonna be very necessary to at least put five more levels onto my Pokémon. As strong as the team is, somebody's gonna die. It's inevitable. Now this victory road is actually really weird. You could get through it very, very quickly, especially because there's no trainers in here at all. In fact, if I used a repel, I'd probably already be out of here. I just kinda wanted to see what the random encounters are, like this Yan Mega. Wow, they really saved the cool Pokemon for Victory Road. No Caterpie is here, and now that I say that, we're gonna end up running into a Caterpie. And oh, do I have to fall down this hole? Bye-bye! Oof. 
these Pokemon trainers in this game must have some sort of like superpower where they just have really, really strong legs and they can fall down through holes because you do that a lot in this game. All right, up this ladder we go. Let's see, where do we go from here? Ooh, item, 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 and there's the exit right there. If only I could just like walk through walls and just go right over there. That would make things so simple. But honestly, with the way my character could just fall through holes, no problem, I don't see why I can't just, like, jump over this little ledge over here and just make it to the exit. But okay, I'll respect the rules of Pokemon, and we'll go over this way. Hmm. Which hole should I fall down? I'm gonna go with this one. Hopefully this is the right way. Oop, we found a little ladder. I think this might be the right way. And... wait a second. Wait a second, is this the exit over here? Or is it? I'm so confused. Well, there's Rock Smash Rocks over here. Let's smash them. And let's see. Ooh, TM67 Recycle. Yes, this is definitely the exit. And right at the exit, if you've played through these games before, you know what's gonna happen over here. So let's go ahead, let's heal up Wu. Because my friends, this right here, this is going to be it. And I think this is really gonna be the battle we need to try that rain strategy out on. Let's give everybody that's not holding an item a citrus berry. There we go, everybody is set. And now my friends, let's try to leave Victory Road, but we're gonna run into a wild Pokemon first. Aw, it's a little Jigglypuff. Like I was saying, let's try to leave Victory Road, but wait a second. Here he comes, it's YouTube once again. Hold it. Are you going to challenge the Pokemon League? Victory Road is at its end for sure. But did you notice? You didn't see any real trainers on the way, did you? Man, they were all spineless. Well, the fact that you have come this far means you're not one of them. But your journey ends here. Because right here, right now, I will crush you. No, YouTube, I don't think so. This battle is gonna be one of the most important battles we've ever fought, ever. Last time we battled this guy, he took out my whole entire team, so we are not having a repeat of that today. This battle, we are getting revenge for my fallen team. For Zuko, for Iroh, and everybody else. Let's do it, guys. All right, so Shiftry is starting off the battle at level 42. Let's try hitting it with Force Palm. I could swap, but who <laughs> he's missing. He's just missing straight up. I can swap, but I do want to set up the Rain Dance right now. Plus, I don't think Wu is in any real danger, especially because Shiftry is missing! YouTube, the tides have turned and luck is on my side today, but we're not getting the Paralysis. It's okay, still getting a little lucky. Let's set up that Rain now. Woo! Three in a row! Three misses in a row! Oh, this is so good! This is so good! We couldn't ask for a better start right here! He's just giving us the battle for free! <laughs> Alright, let's strike him with some thunder. Oh, he finally gets one off. It's alright, you get one power whip, but Wu can tank that all day, right Wu? Of course you can! Let's strike this thing, electrocute that tree! And down it goes, and now we have seven turns of rain to play around with, which we could use with lots of Pokemon on my team right now, but he's sending out a Torterra! Everybody has a Torterra! Torterra is definitely one of the most common Pokemon I've seen in this whole entire randomizer. We need a Torterra counter. I might start one soon. Track all the times I've seen this thing. Alright, Appa, you know the deal. Let's take this thing out with the Aurora Beam, make quick work of this thing. And let's see, with the way things are going right now, we might not even get to take advantage of the rain, honestly. It feels like every time I fight this guy now, I'm always trying out some sort of crazy gimmick. Ooh, but here comes Ampharos. Ugh, now this is a tough decision. I mean, it really shouldn't be. Shucky is the obvious choice, but the problem is Shucky's gonna set up the Sandstorm and kill my rain. So basically I wasted a turn setting up the rain, but I think that'll be better, because the other alternative is switching Wan, who would take neutral damage from an electric type move. But honestly, I think taking no damage is better than taking neutral damage. So this kind of defeats my whole rain strategy, but it's cool. It's all right. Come on out, Shucky. You better go for an electric move right here. Yes, Thunderbolt, we are immune. And yes, get hit by the sandstorm. Now let's finish this thing up with Earthquake and we're faster than it? I'm always surprised by the speeds in this game. Some things outspeed things that I really don't think should be outspeeding. I, I just think Ampharos should be a lot faster than a hit Poudon, but it's okay, I'll, I'll take it all day. Again, maybe it was just going for a move that made it a little bit slower. The Sandstorm is raging on though, and half of YouTube's team is down. And ooh, Sand Slash. 
Now this thing might be annoying for us actually. I feel like it's more than likely going to have the ability Sand Veil, which uh, in the Sandstorm makes its avoidability go up a little bit. So let's just stay in here with Shucky for a little bit and see how Shucky deals with this thing. I really don't want to switch and have my Pokemon that I switch into start taking some Sandstorm damage. Again, that's the main thing I don't like about having the Sandstorm. Nobody else on the team other than Shucky really benefits from it. And Shucky doesn't even get the maximum benefit. Rock-type Pokemon get its special defense boost in Sandstorm, but Shucky being a ground-type doesn't really get anything from that at all. Alright, yeah, it does have the Sand Veil, I knew it! But I guess, honestly, it's only fair. Ooh, Magnitude. Magnitude 6, at least it's not Magnitude 10. Yeah, that's gonna do nothing to us. I guess it's only fair, though, because in the beginning of the battle, he missed all of those Power Whips. That's seriously my luck right there, but let's take out the Sand Slash, get the crit for good measure. We definitely didn't need that critical hit. That looked like it was gonna be a clean KO. And so far, we're doing fantastic! Ooh, Ninjask, though. Uh, if only I had a Rock-type Pokemon on the team. Let's give Appa a shot over here. If it goes for a bug move, we resist it, and Appa, ooh, Brave Bird, that might hurt. I'm not sure how strong Ninjask's attack is, but Brave Bird is a very, very strong, ooh, yeah, I'm not liking that. I am not liking that. Ooh, nice. The Citrus Berry is going to come into play, though, but the problem here is the Sandstorm again. So let's see, we started the turn off at full health. We're ending the turn at around 90 HP right now. This is going to be a little bit risky. Alright, so we have three moves that are super effective against this thing. Fire Blast, Aurora Beam, and Fly. I don't want to go for Fly, because Fly is a two-turn move, and this thing is going to be faster than me, especially with the speed boost. So it's going to hit me with Brave Bird. I'm going to go up in the air and take, like, two turns of Sandstorm damage, which might kill me, even if I kill the Ninjask, and it's not worth it. Fire Blast misses a lot, and Aurora Beam, it's super effective, and Ninjask doesn't have crazy defense, so I think that's the best play. Let's go ahead, let's try it, and let's just hope we can tank this Brave Bird well. Whatever happens here, I don't want to see Appa go down. Yeah, 23 HP. Two turns of Sandstorm damage would put us very close to dying, and that's an unnecessary risk, especially when this kills it. There we go. Nice and clean, and getting to level 46 as well. Any new moves coming in, Appa? No, but that's okay. We don't need it. Let's see, how much we're gonna take from that Sandstorm here? Yeah, yeah, not good. And Latios as his final Pokemon, a green Latios. Emerald Latios coming in. I see. Seems it wasn't just luck that got you this far. Yeah, you're right, YouTube. It wasn't just luck. It was a desire to beat you. After what you did to my team a few episodes ago, we're going all in against you. But now, here's the problem. How do we beat Alatios? Appa would usually be fine against this thing with Aurora Beam. Star and Wan both have hard time switching in because it could go for super effective moves on either front. Wu would also be a, a reasonable counter, but its health is too low. Kenya, we could swap in, but Kenya can't do anything in return to it. And Shucky, again, Shucky can't really hurt this thing. Its typing makes it really annoying, and I believe it has the levitate ability, so we can't hit this. Uh, I guess we'll try using a Hyper Potion on Appa and hope this thing goes for, like, a Draco Meteor or something, so it lowers its special attack. Because I think we could beat this thing easily if we can just get Juan in here. Okay, it's got the Dragon Claw, but the trouble is getting Juan in. Ooh, nice! It does no damage to us! <laughs> now that we could definitely work with. Never mind, maybe I'm overthinking this thing a little bit, but no, it does see. That's why I was worried. It has psychic moves and it has dragon type moves, and psychic does a lot more than that dragon claw did. How much are we gonna do to this thing though? Ooh, that's not good. But wait a second, what do we get the drop? We lowered its attack. Nice! So wait a second, with its attack lowered, we can probably switch in to Wan. Yeah, I'm thinking, because look at its defenses. We could take a Psychic, we could take a Dragon Claw, now that its stats are lowered, and we have a Citrus Berry there, so we get some extra health back. I think this is the play. It's probably gonna hit us with the super effective Dragon Claw. The game tends to know where I'm switching, but I think we've got this. Alright, no, it's gonna go for the Psychic. It's cool. How much is Psychic gonna do to Wan? How much is Psychic gonna do to Wan? We're good. We're fine. We're fine. Now all we need to do is just hit it with a move. And as much as I want to go for Roar of Time or Draco Meteor to style on this thing, I'm actually going to go for the Spatial Rend here. Just to- Ooh, Dragon Rush. That's a little bit stronger. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, Juan. I knew you could survive. I knew you had it in you. Ugh, if it wasn't for that attack drop, though, Juan would not have made it here. And yes, we're going to connect. 
I went for the spatial rent here because I that 5% extra accuracy really matters. And nice, we're getting the critical hit for good measure. Didn't need it, but there we go. 6 owing YouTube! I couldn't win what you possess and what I lack. I'm beginning to understand what the Dragon Tamer said to me. Whew, that was close. That was close. If we missed that move in the end, everything would have been different. But there we go. Gotta revenge on YouTube. Dot dot dot. I haven't given up on becoming the greatest trainer. I'm going to find out why I can't win and become stronger. When I do, I will challenge you. I'll beat you down with all my power. Humph. You keep at it until then. Yeah, that's right. Get out of here, YouTube. Walk of shame. And now, we walk out of Victory Road with, <laughs> with another encounter little fossil Pokemon. Let's run away from this thing. Imagine if it trapped us in here and killed us. That would be so annoying. But there we go. We made it to the Indigo Plateau. We're here, guys. This is it. The Pokemon League. The ultimate challenge. These are going to be the toughest battles. Four insane trainers in a row, plus one legendary champion. Full teams of six, all their Pokemon are going to be extremely powerful, fully evolved. I think my team is up for the challenge, though. Especially after six owing YouTube like that, including taking down a legendary Pokemon. We really did it. So, my friends, I'm going to do some training. And next time, you know what's going to go down. We're going to step foot in the Indigo Plateau building, and we're going to start fighting the Elite Four. Some of my Pokemon are going to die and some of them are gonna become champions. If you're excited for the epic conclusion to the Johto Saga, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up right now, and my friends, I'll see you next time, where we're gonna be taking on the Pokemon League. See you soon.